So, he wasn't breaking bad. He wasn't sons of anarchy. He is in Heat, one of the best movies ever made, with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. He's in Desperado. You may know him as Machete. So I want you to give him a super warm welcome, the super iconic, mega legendary, Mr. Danny Trejo! Can you act like a cop? 
convict. I thought, let me see, I've been in San Quentin, Folsom, Soledad, Tracy, YTF, Vacaville. I'll give it a shot. I was in every prison in the state of California. And uh, I, I got hired to be a convict. They gave me a blue shirt, I took off my shirt. He saw that tattoo, told me, leave your shirt off. Sitting there with a big tattoo on my chest. This guy comes over and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I'm like, yeah. He says, I saw you win the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin State Prison. And I said, you're Eddie Bunker. I knew this guy. Oh, wow. This guy adapted the screenplay, Runaway Train. Eddie Bunker did Eddie Bunker. He says he's a good friend of yours, right? Well, they had the, the John Boyd character, the hero, as a guy that killed his wife and went to prison. Now, you can't be a hero in prison if you killed your wife. I you killed her boyfriend, you can be a hero. You know what I mean? <laughs> but not the wife. Right. And, uh, and so he got hired to, to make it like an American movie because it was kind of a Japanese movie. So Eddie said, what are you doing here? I said, they're going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. <laughs> and we both laughed because we've been doing that for free forever. <laughs> he says, you know what? We need somebody to train one of the actors on a box. What's the most of pay? And he says, 320 a day. And I said, how bad do you want this guy beat up? I thought he wanted me to beat somebody up. So I'll do it, I'll do it for another 50 bucks, yo. Because if people don't know, you were a boxer, right? Yeah, from the early lightweight, on. lightweight and the welterweight champion of every institution I was in. That way, sometimes if you start talking to me and I go, uh, 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 because I'm remembering him here, you know. <laughs> but so, anyway, so, I started training an actor named Eric Roberts how to box for a movie called Runaway Train. And Eric, bless his heart, he was like a movie star. And movie stars, they're dicks. They really are. And the, you know, in 1985, it was still the time where Eric's, where movie stars kind of ran right. the show. That you know, uh, uh, and so if, if, one, if a movie star got me, I don't want to work. You can go to his trailer and everybody just be screwed. So, so that was the whole... Yeah, kind of Eric would kind of... I guess he respected me. You know? Right, yeah. Uh, uh, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> no, he, no, he was afraid of me. He would do whatever I told him to do. And the director saw that. And the director was a guy named Andre Kajalowski. It was his first movie in, in America. Wow. So he was having a hard time, like, uh, how do you say it? Communicating, communicating with, with the cast. movie stars. The cast was simple. Because, you know, they do whatever you want to do. But movie stars, they always have, like, I have a, I have a different idea of this character. You know? <laughs> have. So I, Eric would do whatever I told him. So Andre just hired me. Wow. And, and that, that was all Runaway Train, right? That was on Runaway Train. Cause, cause, great movie. Yeah, man. I mean, in that era, you made so many great appearances. You weren't even in Cage with Lou Ferrigno, right? Absolutely. I love Lou. I used to, he was here last year. Oh, oh God. I, I used to tease him. I'd get behind him and yell at him. Because he really can't hear. Hey, Brig, hey, Lou, turn around. I'll slap the shit out of you. <laughs> you don't know me. And he threw around. What the hell? Oh, nothing. I just was done. That, one, one of the few people that can talk like that to the Incredible Hulk is Mr. Danny Trejo. And you, you were also in Death Wish 4, right? Yes! With yeah, Charles, Charles Bronson? Yes. That's crazy, because you've been in so many films back in the day, and I think... Well, Charles Bronson was one of the first movies that I ever had a name. Because the first four years of my career, I was bad guy. Bad guy with tattoos. Tattooed guy, Mexican guy with tattoos. I, I never had a right. name. So that was the first film you had a name in? 
And then, uh, one of the great films you were in was one of the early Antoine Fuqua ones, right? Replacement Killers? It was what? The one, one of the early Antoine Fuqua films. Yeah, it was uh, Ben and Ten Tree 3. Yeah. I'd say yeah. severe. Yeah. <laughs> that was so great. And I wanted I to- I got beat up. I was a boxer. I got beat up by these little kids. So cute. Right? What was it? And Steve, Stevie Anton. Stevie Anton, I don't know what he means. Stevie he was Anton. Like a Disney kid, right? Right. And it was so funny because he was scared to death. <laughs> I'm not going to hit you, though. Wow. I mean, you got so many stories, but I have to touch on this film. Uh, obviously, literally, I grew up on all your work. And I wanted to say this you're somebody that can really steal a scene because you have so much emotion and power just with your facial expressions. Like somebody like Al Pacino, I think you have that too. Like, I love it says more than some scripts, like what, what you can say with your eyes. I did a movie called Heat. Exactly. With De Niro, Pacino, Val Kilmer, uh, John, John Boyd. You know, it's all the biggies, right? And in this one scene, we, they were talking about, De Niro says, okay, well, what about you? And he talks to, to Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore, right. Sizemore gives a long speech about why he wants to be uh, a robber, right? Outside. Then he has Val Kilmer. Val says the same thing. And then he looks at me, and I go, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go, and I swear to God, De Niro says, you stole the damn scene with two words. <laughs> Isn't that great if somebody like De Niro says it? I loved him, I loved him. And we was a, it, was a, it was a great movie. It, it was, was a great time in that film. It's, it's one of the best films ever made. He is one of my favorite films. I've been watching it all my life. Your role is amazing. The things you say, the timing, and just spectacular. And what was it like to be involved in a project with Michael Mann, Al Pacino, and Robert De Niro, just the whole production? You know, the, the really funny, there's a story. Uh, I don't know how much time I got, but, but Michael Mann did a movie with my uncle called the Jericho Mile. And they did it in Folsom Prison. Your uncle Gilbert? My uncle Gilbert. He was in Folsom. And when he went, to Fulton, when, when Michael Mann went to do this movie in Fulton, well, the African American inmates came out, and the Caucasian inmates came out. None of the Mexicans, okay? Now, you can't have a prison movie without Mexicans. And so Michael Mann was wondering what was going on, and they told him, well, you gotta go talk to the union. <laughs> you gotta go talk to the guys that run the Mexicans. Right. So he had to go talk to my Uncle Gilbert, Another Gilbert Tewksbury, a guy, about four different Mexicans that basically were, were the shot callers of the Mexicans. And Michael Mann made good friends with my uncle, Gilbert. And in fact, he paid my uncle sad wages all the time they did that movie. Right. He will, he'll never cop to it, but I know he did. But, and so, when I showed up on the set of Heat, I was actually, me and Eddie Bumper again, we were the armed robbery consultants. We were showing them how to do robberies. Wow. And uh, Michael Mann said, Gilbert, I'm Danny. Gilbert's my uncle. called you Gilbert. And we started talking. And the funny thing is, he changed his script four times with different names. And then he finally said, you know what, Danny, I cannot look at you without thinking of Gilbert. And since my Gilbert, had died of an overdose, right? And uh, and uh, he said, can we call you Gilbert in the movie? So if you notice, in Heat, it says Danny Trejo. Uh, Gilbert Trejo played by Danny Trejo. That's your character's name. It's amazing, that's crazy. And isn't John Voight in that film based on Eddie Bunker? Bunker? He's based after Eddie Bunker, exactly. And John Voight was in my first movie, right. Runaway Train. Amazing story, man. And one fun... You guys gotta understand this guy, this man has a lot of impact on different sides of the world and society, and I love that. Um, listen, one more thing about Heat. Is it true that they called you on a day off to do an additional scene, and you showed up in your regular clothing and they kept it like that? Yeah, absolutely. It was one of the actors, I'm not gonna say his name, 
but one of the actors was uh, was out late. In fact, the guys that were dealing crap, right? I, I, I know everybody. This guy calls me up and says, hey, Danny, aren't you working with that? What are you? Says his name. And, yeah, what? And that down here, damn, I thought down here trying to score. It's like 2.30 in the morning, right? What? This guy down here trying to score. I said, yeah, yeah. Well, tell him I said, go ahead. You know what I mean? Well, anyway, he scored, and uh, then he got lost. He didn't show up on the set. Wow. Oh, That's why they called me. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I had the day off, and, and the, the first AD called me and said, Danny, <laughs> I'm here now. Hey, it's my day off. Michael Mann says, come down here now. It's my Michael Mann. <laughs> so anyway, I went down in my clothes, right? Yeah. And I like, what's up? And they go, yeah. They set up this phone book. That was the, the thing where I talk on the phone book. Yeah. Where, you, where you call it Robin De Niro, like an Earl O.K., yeah. like white on rice. Uh, or like, like, like a cheap suit. <laughs> yeah. Like a cheap suit. That was so much fun. Great. So uh, that was he. Listen, I'm a fan of the movies, the TV work you did. The book you did, the restaurants you have. I was at Treo's Cantina. If you ever go to LA, go to Treo's Tacos and Treo's Cantina. He wrote two books about food. You have a new tequila out? Yeah, I just saw it on Instagram. It's not an alcoholic. Tastes good, too. Well, I need to try that. Yeah, you can drink um, a bottle and still dry. <laughs> that's fantastic. And then, aside from that, you also have a family member within the movie world that you found out about while you were filming. Which is Robert Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez, second cousin. Second cousin. Because you are in Desperado, once upon a time in Mexico, and from Dust to Dawn. From Dust to Dawn. I'm in all three from Dust to Dawn. Spy Kids! <laughs> no. So, hold on. All three, I want everybody to yell, let's do machete in space, okay? One, two, three. Let's do Machete in space! And I agree with that statement. that to Robert Rodriguez. Yes, I agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, so, what was it like to work on those films, like the Mexico Trilogy? It was awesome. It was like so much fun. And, uh, there was uh, so much happened. It's funny because when, like the cartels were pretty heavy out in Mexico. When I walked out of my hotel, about 500 people out front of this hotel, and they're all like kind of staring. Trejo, because being Mexican, I, I'm the Patriot Saint of Mexicans down there, right? Amazing. Patriot Saint of Gangster. And uh, there's three guys on this little mole right there, right? And I'm looking at them, and you know who they are, because nobody's standing near them. You know what I mean? And they're looking at me, and they're like, I'm like okay, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the culture is so deep and so rich, it's, it's beautiful, man. I was there once only, but I can imagine. But you found, you, you found out Robert Rodriguez is your second cousin while filming Desperado, and then later on you did Spy Kids with him. Yeah, yeah. Are, are there a lot of Spy Kids fans here? So, Danny, tell us the best anecdote from filming Spy Kids. You know what, I gotta tell you something about Spy Kids. You know how people say that, like, kids are bad to get in the movies. Uh, Daryl and, uh, God, it's a little girl back there. Spy kids, come on, guys. The little girl, I, come on, oh, forgive me. Michelle. Anyway, those two kids were so unbelievable and so professional, it was, like, scary because, uh, uh, Alexa, Alexa Vega would do her scene Everybody would cheer, and she would immediately pick up her little brother because it was her turn to watch it. You know what I mean? It's like, ain't no movie star in our family. And it was like, and to this day, she's still working. Two beautiful children. They live in Hawaii. I just finished a movie with Daryl. He's still working. Got a little baby. They're just great, great kids. That's fantastic. Do you guys stay in touch? Oh, yeah. Wow. You make so many friends. I mean, Art Shaw became a friend of yours, right? Who? Art Shaw. Yeah. He was, he was the guy that was like, yo, you got to start a restaurant. Him and, uh, 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 that's, everybody. De Niro's still, well, actually, my son has got De Niro's 
cell phone. I don't even have it. Is that your son that directed the movie you're in? That's my son, yeah. And my son directed me in a movie called From the Sun. And it's going to Sundance, I think. And I think it's probably the heaviest thing I've ever done. Because in it, I had to cry. Because it's about, it's about a son that dies of an overdose and his dad has to go looking for him. You know, and my mom always used to say when I got in trouble in the middle of the night somewhere, <clears throat> she would wake up. You know, she would automatically wake up and knew that I was in trouble and an hour later she'd get a call from jail or something, you know. And uh, that's the way he starts the movie. The, you see him dying and me waking up. You know? So this is the first time you cried on screen? Yeah, because he kept... I wanted to cry, you know, like John Wayne. Okay, kill him. <laughs> All right, you, you kind of manly. But he kept showing me baby pictures. Hey, Dad, remember this? Hey, remember? Oh, wow, remember? And I thought, yeah, yeah, man. So when it came down to, to the night, it was, we're in the desert, it was cold. And Sasha, the little girl, that was his girlfriend and it had actually buried him. I asked her, did you kill my son? And she said, no, I loved him. He was my only friend. And she thought, I lost him. There was nothing manly about this cry. No, this was, this was a booger cry, all right? This was like, and I couldn't stop. It's beautiful, though. Oh, he unbelievable. And your son did that. I mean, that's amazing. That must have been an amazing experience. And then, yeah, well, if I want to sock him after that. He afterwards he goes, nice acting, Dad. I go, that's what you did. Wow. He was awesome. Great. Um, so obviously we gotta talk about Machete. That was Robert Rodriguez as well. Anybody likes Machete? Yeah. So there are two films, and I love the fact you were just saying, make the statement about the third one, because I want to see it as well. But what was it like to do the first one, the Machete, the original one? Well, you know what? The Grindhouse trailer, right? When we did Desperado, that was the first one. And all the people, like nobody knew uh, Antonio Banderas. You know, everybody knew Selma. And, yeah. and actually, if you want to know the truth, the studio didn't want to use Selma because they had uh, Antonio, and he has a very, you know, he has got that, the Span, Spanish accent. Did I thank you? you know, had that, Spanish, very, uh, I don't know what you call it, but, uh, Castel uh, Castela, Cast Uppity, I call it Uppity. Okay, right. You know, we Uppity. Uppity. You. Yes, my love. And, uh, and then Selma had an accent. So they were saying, too many accents, blah, blah, blah. So Robert refused it, but then I don't want to do it if you don't want Selma. So thank God he got Selma hired. Because that was really the kickoff to her career. And she was amazing. I couldn't tell you anybody else was in that but me. Right, so and in, in that film, that's actually where we see you toss the, the knife for the first time. Well, everybody kept approaching me and wanted pictures, and, and Robert kept saying, hey, they think you're the star of this movie. I said, well, so do I. What are you talking about? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Classic, wow. And, and that's when I found out he was my second cousin. So I told him, okay, make my part bigger. You know? And that's how that idea was born. And he said, you know what? I've got this story. It's about this federal that fights with machete. And I thought, okay, when do we do that? So we just kind of talked about it, talked about it. And then we did Spy Kids. And Robert said, hey, let's call this guy Uncle Machete. Remember? Right. Spy Kid, Uncle Machete, Spy Kid. And then when he did Grindhouse, they needed fake trailers. Everything that's in that trailer is in the movie. Exactly. Because when we came out of Grindhouse premiere, everybody was saying, you've got to do Machete. That was a smart move, but yeah, Uncle Machete, that was, that was in the game too, wasn't it? In the video game? Or yeah, and kids are still watching it. Wow. So, that was before the trailer, then the, the, the quote unquote fake trailer, and then Machete was born really as a movie. And do you prefer the second part or the first part? Well, I love the first part simply because I had done Heat and Robert did, 
So when we asked Robert De Niro if he would be in Machete, he goes, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And it was so funny because we're doing Machete and uh, I, I, I would always tease Robert De Niro, right? When we were on heat, I'd go, you, hey, you, you, number one. He goes, he, we had two call sheets. We had a call sheet for the bad guys and a call sheet for the cops because they were separate. So I you, number one. So when we're doing machete, I ran into him, I'm looking at him, and he goes, hey, you. <laughs> when he said that, I said, can I get you some coffee, Mr. De Niro? <laughs> that's still Robert De Niro, that's an amazing I don't coffee. care, it's still Robert De Niro. Yeah, right? Wow. Uh, so yeah, the difference between acting and voice acting, because, he is also in King of the Hills. King of the Hill, uh, I was on Jasper in a cartoon. Uh, and Rick and Morty, you're in Rick and Morty as well. Rick and Morty, I was Jaguar. I was uh, uh, Diablo the Pirate in uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. I oh, was wow. Boots and Dora the Explorer. And I was uh, somebody else. <laughs> and also, you are in Star Wars in the Mandal uh, in the Book of Boba Fett, right? Oh yes, yeah. Book of Boba Fett. You guys like Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. So I was really enjoying your scenes. You showing up all of a sudden in such a an iconic environment, being an icon yourself. Well, you know, Boba Fett. I worked with him before. Me and him did six days, seven nights in uh in uh with Harrison Ford in Hawaii. And you want to talk about a guy that's in shape. Jeremy, the Jeremy Bullock guy? What's up there? He's a Boba Fett. His name is, uh... Oh, uh, uh, who plays Bora? Right, I forgot his name too. Come on, who plays Boba Fett in the book of Boba Fett? Say it again. I know who you mean, though. Anyway, the name you lose me. We know who you mean. Yeah, this guy would start running on a Sunday and Lord, he... Was it Lawrence McCoy? No. no. Okay, anyway, yeah. So that guy is super in shape. He was done running on Sunday and Tuesday. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, just in great, great shape. And what, what is it like for you after having done like over 300 movies and all of a sudden, I counted them last week, there's 325 movies or something? I stopped counting at 10. <laughs> <laughs> but then you're part of the Star Wars universe, does that like impact your career in some kind of way still? You know what? I just gotta tell you that Star Wars movies now are the future of movie making. It's just, it sounds so unbelievable. I was like, I was blown away. And, you know, my son was with me. He was like explaining everything to me. You know, I know my lines and don't bump into the furniture. You know? Find your light. <laughs> Because, I mean, that's that's another addition to the Denny Trailer legacy. It's amazing. I love the fact you're in Star Wars as well. Oh, and so, I think we got some time for some Q&A moments, some questions from people in the crowd. If you have a question for Mr. Trail, if you want an autograph or a picture, we do it in the guest square, so no questions about that. But I'm just hosting the Q&A. Ask him anything about Machete or any other of his 324 films. And he's right here. Speak clearly. Speak clearly. Hi, here's the graph. Hey. Hi, I'm Danny. Uh, big fan. Love to see you in the Star Wars. Uh, was sad to see you go so quickly because we only have seen a few scenes. Um, I have a question because you have done so much films. What was something you'd like to do that you haven't done before? Like a, a completely different character that you want to play? Or... What do you got? Write a movie, I'll do it. <laughs> I, you know what? I, my agency gets like 15 script, scripts a week. They go through them, they'll give me two. You know, say, you know, what do you want to do? And I'll look, how much is paying the most? And then, which one I kind of like, you know? And that's what I'll do, because to me, it's a job. You know, it, 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 it's a job. Whatever job you got, it's the same thing, it's just, I just gotta act like this, you know. You gotta really do work. <laughs> Thank you. So write a movie and get back to us. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie, he has to get back to us. <laughs> 
Okay, next question. Hi. Hi, hi. How are you? <laughs> What's the new question? Uh, uh, did you ever take anything from set? From what? From your from the set? Did you ever take? Oh, did you bring home any props from any set? Any props? I did, for example. You know what? I I, I gotta tell you, I probably got two hundred machetes that people have sent me. <laughs> A satellite? A satellite, yeah. A magenta made out of satellite material. Wow. So, no, I never bought it. Usually, like, if they got a nice leather jacket, I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, let me tell you a cool story. I have the Nike sneakers yeah, that he wore in the film Fanboys, and he just signed them for me with the actual ones he wore. That's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, they were cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hey. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, what movie would you give your life for to star in again? What movie would you give your life for to star in again? Yes, basically uh, the last movie ever. Oh, so what would be the last movie you could ever make if you only could make one more movie? What would you want to star in? Uh, my life starting all over. <laughs> <laughs> something from Breaking Bad? Is that yes? I, uh, I got some meth for him too. You got some blue sky crystal meth, sky blue. What is it? <laughs> so, I mean, you guys, you gotta give him a round of applause for the role in Breaking Bad. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks. Tortuga the villain. Hola, tía. Give from the Dutch crowd. Thanks. Thanks. Famous actor arrested uh, in putting <laughs> blue stuff in the... <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, I, you made an appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race. I was wondering what that was like. What, what? Can you say that a little bit slower and more clear? An appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race uh, RuPaul's last season. Drag Race. I liked it! Yeah, yeah RuPaul is so cool! <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm doing a show. My daughter calls, right? Hello, hi daddy, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this show with a whole bunch of gay people. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. Hey, what show is this? And my daughter heard and said, RuPaul, Dad, why did you call me? That's my favorite show. Oh wait, hold on for a pretty ruin. I gave RuPaul, she was mad. And they started talking and so sweet. RuPaul is so sweet. Okay, well, let's have lunch. Okay. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so that was awesome, man. So, thanks. Thank you. Next one. Hello there. Um, I, um, Spy Kids was my childhood. So, uh, if there is going to be a Spy Kids 5, would you be there? Oh, yeah. But I think they just did a Spy Kids, but I think it's all with the kids. I'm, I'm not sure what he's doing. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Next question, let's try and get as many done as we can. Hi. How did you experience the heat uh, weapon training? The heat weapon, the weapon training for the movie Heat? We, we did. Well, you know what, let me tell you something. Uh, Robert De Niro, we, were, we actually went up to the sheriff's uh, training area, sheriff's training there. It's uh, Biscaloop Center, which is where the sheriff's train. And uh, they had this obstacle course, right? And I'm watching Robert De Niro run this obstacle course, right? And he good, right? And then I says, I'm gonna kill his time. I was like, oh, I'm gonna kill his time. Oh yeah, I got him. I'm gonna make Robert De Niro look bad. And then he came around and he goes, I'll do it once more. He took off again. And I says, yeah, I'll leave it for that. <laughs> well, I'll just sit here. Because you great shape. But we did, we did training, we did weapons training, we did everything. So it's so funny though. They, he, they wanted to walk into a bank with a gun and know how it felt. And Michael Mann, Michael Mann said, <laughs> he, he, know, he said, I know how it feels. So they actually walked in 
was a gun. Okay, man. you told Michael Mann. They weren't loaded. I told Michael Mann. I already did it. I, hell no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Great, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, too. Next question. Hello. So, uh, I know you mostly play like, serious roles, but I loved you in Brooklyn Nine-Nine as the former Rosa. <laughs> So I was wondering how you liked it and playing with Andy Sandler and all that. You know, that was fun. I, I'll play any role they give me. And I'll, I'll be a tree. Just give me more money if you're going to put fruit on me. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter to me. I'll do whatever you got. I, if I like the movie, I'll do it. The only thing that I do, I make sure that there's at least three or four Latinos in that movie. You know what I mean? It's like, I won't, you know, it's like, because we got to spread it around. Right. Okay, thank Great. you. Thanks. Next question. <laughs> Señor Trejo, buenas tardes. Buenas which tardes. Has been, uh, which has been the most difficult production you participate and why? I'm going to have to say that my son's movie, From a Son, was the most difficult thing I had to do because I had to, I had to act like my son had died, you know, and uh, Yeah, that, I think that was the toughest thing I ever had to do, you know, and uh, right now I gotta say uh, my son is in the DGA, he's a director, and uh, we're getting ready to do some films together. Wow. Gracias. Amazing. Gracias. Thank you. Thank, thank you so Thank you too. Thank you so much. Hi. From all the movies that you've done, which uh, movie did you like the look of your outfit the most? With, from, say that again? From which movie did you like your look, your outfit the most? So what was your favorite outfit in all of the movies you played? Which which outfit did you like the most, right? Uh, machete. Hey, Machete, everybody make some noise! I gotta tell you something. One of the most proudest days of my life was after we did Machete. And uh, It was Halloween, and I opened the door for the trick-or-treaters, and they'd be dressed as machete. Aww. Little Mexican mustache. Trick-or-treat, who are you? Are you machete? <laughs> Which is like so unbelievably honor for me that, that they liked that. It was just awesome. Wow, great. Thank you. So it is machete. Next one. I asked for you to see your your own head on a turtle in Breaking Bad. Uh, very affordable. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me tell you, very affordable. They had to pay me like three days, like three days before I even got on set, because they had to make that head. So that was the right. thing they had to do. So they had to, they had to make the face head. So, so yeah. I almost, I almost paid. A bunch of money I did before I even on set, and then I got paid up. So I'm thinking, damn, it's, because at first we did the first part, the head part at first, and then that movie, that episode was number one for their episode. So they brought me back to do the first part. So you, so originally you were only going to be the head. featured as the head on the on the turtle. And then they and then they wrote you in there. Wow! And you know what? In uh, I was in London. I was doing a Comic Con, and this guy comes in and said, "Would you sign our tour?" I go, "Yeah." And I get tour. It's like they, they won't let us bring it in. I said, "What are you talking about?" So I walked outside. Man, a, tour is today. a big, a big turtle. And if they paid me a lot of money, I just signed it and put all la DEA on it, you know? But I, I thought it was just unbelievable. What are you getting towards that big? Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we got five more questions probably. Let's go. So, in Breaking Bad, uh, the scene that we're talking about it, uh, before, how did your family react to it when they saw it? How did your family react to the turtle scenes? And They go, wow! My, what is, it's funny, I'll tell you. The only scene my family did not like was the scene in Heat. Right. When I died in Heat. 
My mom couldn't watch that. My, my, nobody. They couldn't watch that. And I, what are you talking about? You guys are seeing me die on a pool table. My eyes rolled into the pool pockets. You know, dust the dawn, yeah. And they said, yeah, but that's the way it's been. That's the way we expected you to die. <laughs> no, that's the same oh, thing. Well, that was heavy. That's deep, yeah. So, you know, because that, that's what we did. We robbed and stole and dealt drugs before I got into the movies. So, so, wow. It's funny. I, you know, so, I, so, I love it when somebody says, what did you do before you were in the movies? Arm robberies. <laughs> but, no, no, but listen, I got to say, thank you. Thank you. I got to say, though, I have a lot of admiration and respect for how you flip your wisdom and knowledge because people want to know a lot of stuff from you. I know about the American Me story that you're writing about in the book. You know, it's just, you have so much value, man, to add to the world, bro. I go to, uh, yeah, I, fuck I go to juvenile halls, I go to high schools, I go to prisons, I go to, I just, I still talk. I talk about staying clean, staying sober. I talk about education is the key to anything you want to do. Alcohol and drugs will ruin your life. Still, that's my message Fantastic. to the young kids. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, give that a round of applause. We got a couple more questions before we wrap it up next one. Hi, Danny. Uh, did you uh, like to play and star in the Call of the Dead game, uh, game mode from uh, Call of Duty? Say that again? Uh, back in the day, uh, there was Call of the Dead. Did you Call of the it? Dead. Call of the Dead. Yeah. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, that was good one. I started doing I, The first one I did, the first video game I did was a, like, a, uh, Death Race or something. I forget what it was. Death Race. I don't know. I hated the Haitian. Sorry. 2007 or something? It was, uh, Dead, so you love that. Though. Yeah, I love Call of the Dead. I think Call of the Dead escaped from New York. Wow, that's another great one. Thanks. Final couple, two questions. Hey, that okay, uh, three, three questions. Let's go. I love your work, but um, which movie is your favorite? Uh, Robert De Niro's Taxi Driver or Al Pacino's Scarface? What's your favorite movie, Scarface or Taxi Driver? From those two. Uh, I hated Pacino's accent. Why? Because it was just so far off. I never heard no uh, Cuban talk like that. Wow, so you didn't like that because of that? Yeah, you know what, it's like, uh, I think there could have been a lot of Cubans to play there, but I, I, I just, I, I'm not offended, it's just like when, when, uh, uh, It was called Viva Zapata. It was about a, a Mexican hero uh, that helped win the revolution. Only problem in the movie, it was uh, play. Viva Zapata. It was, uh, it was the, who was the godfather? Marla Bravio. Yeah. So it was kind of like, wait a minute. So you said it's, so it's somewhat of a mis, miscasting in itself? A little bit, yeah, I think so. But, you know, I mean, that's the and, one. And Blood In, Blood Out, though. That was, that was, that was a, a good one, right? Blood In, Blood Out, all Mexican. Yeah, well, but it was. That was a well-executed film. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, last two questions. Did you have to do a lot of extra training for Machete, or did you already have the perfect body type? No, I was already, I was already strong enough to kill all. Uh, What's his name? Who did I kill him? Machete. Who did he kill him? Machete. Come on. Come on. Didn't you kill him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the only guy that killed uh, Steven Seagal on camera. That's you know, so. Yeah, hey. You were in March for Death too, right? March for Death, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Last two questions. Hi, then. Um, is there a specific character or film that holds a special place in your art? Because I personally love Rondo from The Devil's Rejects. Yeah. I'm a big fan from, from uh, Rob Zombie movies. Uh, what's yours? Rob Zombie's a good friend of mine. But 
He, he wants to know, is there a character you play that you hold dearest to your heart? His favorite is from the Rob Zombie film. I loved Rondo, he was cool. You know what I mean? I love when he was talking about the cockroaches. That was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, I kind of just get into all the characters. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's one that I haven't loved. You know, right? I think it'd be tough to do a character that you didn't like. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Thanks, man. Okay, the last question before we wrap it up. Final question. Hi. Hi. Why your name is Machete? What? Say that again. Por qué tu nombre es Machete? Machete porque peleo. Machete. Thank you.